what are the top three undergraduate classes to take if you want to work in strength and conditioning or with athletes? Welcome back to Overhead Athletics. I'm Max Wardell. Today we're going to talk about the three undergraduate classes that you may want to consider taking if you want to work with athletes or in strength and conditioning. You know, college education has become more and more expensive with all the different things and different options that you have out there if you want to work with athletes in strength and conditioning. I think that it's very, very important to maximize your undergraduate education and maximize the classes you're going to take. I think that some of the most important classes to take if you want to work with athletes in the strength and conditioning or performance training sectors are motor learning principles. But you got to make sure you got a good professor for any of these. Research your professors. If you're taking these as electives, you don't want to just waste your time in an elective when you may have another good choice. So motor learning or motor learning principles, um, motor control, maybe the name of the class, and then see if the class is orientated towards athletes and um, training individuals or more towards neurodegenerative disease or neurological disease. So if it's more towards the neurological disease aspect or neurodegenerative disease aspect, you may not be interested in that one. You may want to look for one that um, it may be under a biomechanics title too. So motor learning or motor control, motor behavior, uh, skill acquisition, um, all kind of synonymous and the, the class will probably be um, the same. There's different meanings to the words, but the class will be very, very similar if it's a motor behavior, motor control, motor learning. It may cover um, similar content. There's also options online where you can do an independent study. I wanna say uh, either Idaho or BYU has a motor learning undergraduate class you can get credit for. It's like 600 bucks for the class and it's a 300 level class online. I don't no, I've never taken the, the course, but I know that there's options like that online. Um, there's also some of these in you know a 200 level class that, that are offered at junior colleges. But once again, check who's the professor, what's the focus of the class? Is it neurological disease and pathology, or is it training individuals and athletes? You're gonna want the individuals and athletes focus, but if your only option is neurodegenerative disease or working with uh, neurological patients, still a good class, still a very, very good class, um, but you're gonna have to have some cognitive dissonance and then also be able to jump a few steps to utilize that information towards um, working with athletes and with healthy populations. So motor learning, motor learning principles, number one. Number two, I actually think it's physics one, which is like the Newtonian uh, physics mechanics class, uh, usually required for most science degrees anyway, but I, I think that class is awesome. Once again, you're gonna wanna find a good professor because depending on the professor you have, it might be um, very, very difficult to learn. Now, once you take that class, you're gonna have to utilize those principles to different scenarios. So you're gonna have to be able to take that information and apply it in many different scenarios. But I think that's a very, very important class to understand load, to understand uh, power, to understand the difference between linear and angular acceleration and momentum, and then how torque is applied, um, external torque, internal torque, and that's stuff that, that you can then utilize um, from maybe a biomechanics perspective. So my last class that I would recommend is a human motion analysis, um, qualitative biomechanics class. If you're working with athletes in the field, the quantitative biomechanics is important, but less so often than the qualitative biomechanics. You can know what everything looks like on your spreadsheet and when you have your computer program, but if you can't look at an athlete and actually see how they're moving and then how maybe a internal rotation of the femur re results in a valgus abduction at the knee, which results in a collapsed arch and the talonavicular um, joint is collapsing towards the ground because all different sorts of things. And maybe I can co correct that with gluteal strengthening. Maybe, maybe that person needs an orthotic or an insert, whatever the case is, understanding how to look at a movement and then diagnose the movement is super, super important. And qualitative biomechanics is going to allow you to do that. You can only see so much from the information that you get from your motion capture. You need to be able to look at the movement and see what's going on. Sometimes you have these quantitative biomechanics labs, which are awesome, but maybe I can't see that small amount of uh, internal rotation 
on that, or that I can't tell if that small amount of internal rotation on my spreadsheet or in my um, data set is actually having a functional impact or not. I need to use my eyes and I need to be able to look at slow motion imagery as well as real time um, analysis and real time observation of movement because three degrees of internal rotation of the femur or three degrees of external rotation of the tibia may not be important for this athlete or this individual, but it may be extremely important for this individual. Sometimes one, two degrees is the difference between healthy and injured or the difference between performing at a certain level and not performing at that level. So qualitative biomechanics, human motion analysis, um, Sometimes clinical biomechanics is more qualitative. Sometimes it's more quantitative. Look at the course syllabus if your college has that online. I know that those independent study courses I, or uh, institutions I mentioned earlier, so BYU, Brigham Young University, has some uh, independent study material as well as Idaho. And I know that one of the two has a motor learning um, course and I think both of them have a biomechanics or kinesiology which is basically synonymous kinesiology usually incorporates a few more things into it but a lot of kinesiology courses are human motion analysis or biomechanics courses so those are things to to look into those are the three classes that I recommend if you want to work with athletes um, you know if I had to mention a couple honorable mentions exercise physiology um, would be on there at probably number four. And then a sports nutrition or nutrition science class uh, would be number five. Now, as you go through those courses and look at the courses you want to choose, you're going to want to kind of orient yourself with where you can find the syllabus and maybe compare and contrast. Because sometimes colleges that have these kinesiology degrees and exercise science degrees have a few courses that appear similar but are actually um, that are actually different. So you may have a motor control and a motor learning course as we talked about earlier. And one of them is more designed for athletic populations and one of them is more designed for the neurodegenerative disease population. And so, you know, while both classes are good, you may wanna pick the one that's closer to what, what you wanna do. But those are the three main courses. You got motor learning, physics, which is the quantitative physics or Newtonian physics mechanics and then you have your biomechanics course and then your honorable mentions exercise phys which I think is necessary for everybody but um, you know that's usually required in any sort of kinesiology exercise science um, sports nutrition nutrition dietetics degree so I don't mention it uh, I don't always mention it just because it's usually required anyway but I it's definitely necessary and then sports nutrition if possible nutrition sciences dietetics those sorts of things uh, if the sports nutrition course um, isn't possible I always suggest that you have knowledge of anatomy to go into that biomechanic course so there's always going to be a prerequisites and that sort of thing if you don't if your college doesn't offer these motor learning course or whatever there's uh, often coaching methodology which is sometimes a good uh, alternative if it's um, you know up to date in the current science so coaching methodology could be an alternative for your motor learning principles course because it'll cover it for maybe 25 30 percent of the class it'll probably cover some sports psychology and things like that so um, definitely check that out at your institution I've had a lot of uh, individuals ask me this recently and I've actually had two or three individuals say well what you do Max they're athletes going to college going to play college baseball and they're like well what you do you know what classes should I take or what sh degree should I pursue at my institution so I'm gonna make another video which is gonna talk about uh, which degree which undergraduate degree would be optimal or which um, you know some things to think about as you decide which undergraduate degree you want to pursue if you want to work in the strength and conditioning field or with athletes or um, you know in the rehabilitation field for that matter so I'm gonna make that video as well but there are your three classes that you're gonna to want to consider taking if you want to work with athletes or you want to work in personal training strength and conditioning fields or even rehabilitation